Welcome on in to Off the Edge with Cam Jordan. I have the privilege to sit with, I'm learning the, the hierarchy of things, right? There's always levels to life. Uh, with the uh, executive vice president of football operations at the NFL, but I know him as as Troy, Mr. Senior Troy Vincent, uh, a man who's played in the league for 15 years. I know him from, from the Philadelphia time, been with a, a few different teams, a uh, man who's been an all pro, man who's been a pro bowler, man who has, you know, his accolades speak for himself. And on the opposite side, the, which now he's the em- enemy of where he started because he started off at NFL PA. And then, I'm not an enemy. <sighs> okay. <laughs> no. Okay. For me, it was always a partnership. There and we was, go. It was, it was always a partnership and just making sure that we kept the game on the table. Mm. Treat the players right. You can make money, but you got to do right by the players. That was always my position mm. as an elected official. You're familiar with that. Mm-hmm. So my 13 and my 15 years, I served as an elected officer Yeah, to serve the player in the locker room, making sure the players understood his rights, his hours, wages, working conditions. And then, you know, I had the opportunity also to, I think I did four CBA extensions. Mm. But anytime we're going to have some things that we disagree on, but the one thing we can't disagree on is the, is player. the, is the game and the players, right? Best coaches in the world, best players in the world. We can make money, but you got to do right by the people. I see you left the refs out, but okay, I appreciate that. We're not going to talk about it because, well, you know, like they affect, you know, while you're in it, they affect the game. And sometimes what you'd say, uh, non, non-biased non ways, it's seemingly non-biased ways. I don't think they're intentionally mm. doing that to affect the game. I think now with technology – now with the expansion of a few rules, I think some of those things that worry people, mm-hmm. I think we we'll, we can fix some of those things. We still want the game to be played on the field and officiated on the field. Right. And then tweaking a few things that technology allows us to lean into. But I don't think any player, I know I wouldn't, I don't want a, another eye in the sky right. determining a play inside of my stadium. I would like less eyes so we can actually play the Correct. game. Correct. Right. Correct. And then you have a you have a good old zebra striper. Just throw one of those flags. You you play corner. The the way you played back in the day, could it be played now? I, say I get asked that question often. Absolutely not is the answer. I would have had to adjust. Mm-hmm. And I just think you all today, I just love watching you all play. Yeah. You're phenomenal athletes. The adjustments that we, I'm going to say we, we ask the players to make and watch them make it is extraordinary. I do believe there's some play type that occurred years ago that some of those players probably couldn't adjust, but the vast majority, the few tweaks, but they gave me, they always gave me warnings. Hey, hey, 20. You know, 23, Yeah, get your hands off. Hey, ease up. ease. So you, you had that progression. Yeah. But even, yeah, th- just think about that. Just as a DB, you're backpedaling. You got to come off of a cover two with the run coming up to the outside. And next thing you know, you got to face offensive of linemen. You used to be able to chop them. That's gone now. I can't. And now you got Trent Williams. So, Cam, now listen, crazy. I, I, so it was interesting. <laughs> right. I was in a competition committee meeting. I have to full transparency here. <laughs> I've been in one of those. Never again. When that discussion came up mm-hmm. about removing the cutting in space in the DB or the old offensive line, because they would cut two out in space, I just remember, man, I learned how to really hurt somebody. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was taught how to go get him yeah. and make sure that he didn't get up. Absolutely. But that's what I was taught. Yeah. And now and now that I when I see it, I know better. And I was ce- that was celebrated Absolutely. on Mondays and Tuesdays. Come on. All I, right, you know he gonna pull, you know he gonna do this. Come on, I grew and up you, watching yeah, Joey Brown a baby. Yeah, yes. And come you get on. that you get you get that inside knee the right way with the in, inside part of your helmet. You're gonna tear everything up. Yeah. Uh, Fear me. That's a part but, of the, but that's part of the defense, though. I, I understand uh, imposing your will. Mm. Fear but, me is but what to I said. Intentionally, but to intentionally yeah. harm 
He wants the same thing you want. Absolutely. He wants to take home that paragraph five, mm-hmm. just like you do. Yeah, you're going to have to earn a difference. I know, but I, I just think the unnecessary risk that's associated with it, it was the part that. That's that's what the game I grew up to love though. I, I know. When you and, saw and most look, did. yeah, most what did. when you when you did. saw somebody come down like Ray Ray what Ray Lewis bit when he was first in the league coming down smacking people Dante Hitner when I first got to the league I said oh they're different da- Dante Whitner he's called Hitner Hitner yeah. right so here we go so what'd you think about the hip drop I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to let you live I mean, the hip drop if it happens once a game right I'm not understanding the effects of the game now do I get it. From from a fan's view of oh it's a it's what you said a, a malicious intent tackle is it no it's a smaller person normally trying to tackle a bigger but person. but it's not and the research shows it the video shows it mm-hmm. it's not a smaller person on the big it's actually a bigger person on a smaller person love that too little people get thrown so <laughs> I'm happy you referenced those guys mm-hmm. you, Dante Whitner yeah play with Dante Navarro Bowman so I'm just gonna start with. The defenders, because I had to, I was just sharing this conversation with Takeo Spikes. Yeah. And him and London Fletcher were two of my teammates, but were just like you. Mm-hmm. Man, what are you what are you thinking about, T? Like, you done lost your mind. Help with this. us. Help us. Right. Then I started thinking about it. I said, in Miami, played with Brian Cox, Lewis Oliver. Mm-hmm. In Philly, Brian Dawkins, Jeremiah Trotter. Bobby Taylor, Hugh Douglas, some great tacklers. I go to Buffalo, to Keo Spikes, London Fletcher, Lawyer Malloy, Nate Clements. I forget Fletch started over at, at Buffalo. I go to Washington, Sean Taylor, and others. I've never seen any of those great tacklers tackle someone this way. Mm. The unweighting of their body on the back of the leg, trapping. Yeah. So... I had to put it in context. T, I've seen you made a thousand tackles in the season. I've never seen you in London ever tackle anybody this way. Mm-hmm. And once I said that, you go, you go, yeah. hmm, dog. I've never seen you tackling. I've seen you do some crazy things. Some crazy things. Yeah. But I've never seen you do that. And the, the but the a twenty to twenty five x injury rate. Mm-hmm. I just think as a gatekeeper of the game, I can't walk out of any room. And go, wait a minute, we're not going to do nothing about this. It's a 20 to 25x injury rate on that tackle. Yeah. Come on, coaches. So I don't know if the officials, the intent was not to throw more flags, but today I didn't have anything to even address it. Hmm. And we've been watching it for three years. Literally studying it, watching it, it's showing up at the college level now, the Hmm. high school level now. And it's when the player is down, he down for weeks, right. if not the entire season. Yeah, hopefully so that not, was that hopefully was not it. the entire yeah. season. Yeah, but I mean that's that's sort of you know again that's just a different era of football that you grew up you know yes. grew up yes. watching in the eighties. So you, you know yes. pops played in the eighties, early nineties. I was born. What you got out of college in 80, 92. 92. Right. I was I'm born not, in eighty nine. I'm not. I'm not that. I, I watched your pops, no doubt. You so look, I didn't play with him. I watched him. <laughs> I was young. So I mean, you know what you get, you got into league ninety what. Ninety two. Right. Pops was still in there. There was there was a there was a year yeah, or two left. Le- yeah, 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 he yeah, got out yeah. ninety four. Think about like I just think about that different era of football. So, Waking up with so, like but, watching the John Randalls, the Chris Dolmans. Anyways, we're getting getting okay. off getting off subject. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Um, but the progression of the game, you know, where we've gone to now, we are the you know, we've always in my mind, we've always been the premier sport, but we're the most watched sport if you just look at our ratings, whatever that is. Um here it, domestically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're not going to bring international into it because then that we got work there. We got some we're, work we're to breaking do in, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah, I may I might talk to you later there. about this. I've got I've got ideas. Um, See, that's what I need is your ideas. Yeah, I mean that just in my mind there could be like an American Got Talent meets NFL, clearly for overseas. I like that. Though. I'm just saying so, it could so be look, fun. So when you're sitting on something like that, why would you wait? Why well, wouldn't you just pop me pop me a text or an email to say I'm I got an it? Well, I won because I don't know how to I don't I don't know how to email like an adult and I don't need anybody. But you can text. Hey, yeah, T. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm gonna get on that. In fact, I because it just sort of popped up last week. I was like, why well, don't I went to Liberia with uh, Alvin Kamara, a uh, great teammate. He, and I always told him if he ever went back to the motherland, I'm going too. So I got a double dip. I hit Ghana with the NFL commercial, and then I hit Liberia with uh, with my dog AK, and I said, this is untapped because these mugs look. 
NFL and ready, and all that, they're doing is because is, of that experience and because of the exposure. If you don't come back and share, how would you know? How would I know? Speaking of exposure, a lot of these kids walked into the walked to you know to the uh, draft hotel, uh, saw a couple kids that I've heard about. You know, kids, they're they're men, I guess, mm -hmm. and especially with COVID years, these some of these kids are like 25. 29. man, <laughs> as a rookie, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's wild. Okay. Um, but you know, could, walked in, you know, saw what what I think is a potential number one overall pick. Saw probably in my mind four or five. You know, um, saw a defensive end, Latu. I'm never going to say that last name out of UCLA. Um, and I was just like, I was just thinking, knowing the career that you had on the field and off the field, what would be the advice that you would give them after they get drafted? So I started this conversation with those that will be virtual, that the destination is not being drafted. Absolutely. The, the destination is making a roster mm. and sustaining yourself. Because there's a, there's a mindset today is I arrived. Right. I got here. I made it. And there's a loss of the fight. There's a loss of the hungerness that I, that. I feel like NIL takes a part of that too. No but, question, but that is current, that's our new that, landscape. That's, that's the new landscape, and I and I share with them. You will literally you're starting over. And your ability to retain information. Your your ability to show up every single day, and you will be measured every single day. And because of the rookie wage scale, we didn't have a rookie wage scale when we came in. Who didn't? You didn't. I didn't have a rookie wage scale. You, had a, you didn't have a rookie wage I scale. I was the first year the, uh, after that oh, lockout so you, year. So, so you was the yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. Once okay. all the old heads right. hated on the younger so players. I was giving you more. I was giving you a few more yeah, years. I appreciate in. that. Okay. I don't want it. No. But, what, but the rookie wage scale, they, they'll move on you now. Mm. Cause you're not, they're not paying you a ton of money. So they'll move on you if you as don't. We just saw yes. what happened in Chicago. Yes. Which was crazy with the top three overall pick. I am. I, mean, I do have concerns. Denver too, which is even crazier. Yes. They, they're not, the league is not afraid to to get what they want. No, they will move on you quickly. It's a business. Hey, we saw it with San Francisco with the Trey Lance, and mm -hmm. if things aren't working out, they'll move on. You could be the first, second, third pick. I do have challenges. I, I, I not challenges, but concerns, because today's current athlete, everything is so transactional. Mm -hmm. It's not a pureness of a relationship. Where do you find the loyalty? Exactly. But that's and, always been the case from the team side as well. But I do believe in the past, Cam, I think there was a way to evaluate did Cam love the game? Mm. Absolutely. You know, there's a... It was, it was dry. It was cut and dry. Yeah. <clears throat> does, does he before, love the game? Before social media, you could weed out, does he love the game or does he love the lifestyle? Correct. But now, now, at this point, it's, it's so blended. All, yes. If you're not a part of the, the game, how can you be a part of the lifestyle? And if you're not a part of the lifestyle, you can still be a part of right. the game. And that's the intersectionality of it all. Like You can blend both of those so quick. You'd be like, they, I don't know sure if he's working out because he wants to, because he keeps posting it. And I love that he's Correct. on the grind. But also, is he just doing it for the likes or is he doing it for himself? There's... There's no plenty question. of times I'm like, bro, I was like, I had a killer workout. Wish somebody would have captured this, this crazy shit that I just did. Also, I don't need people in my business like that. But I do have concerns. It is it is a different era of what makes him tick. Yeah. And now this is happening when you're 14, 15. To and sit I down with your parents, high school. No question. Sit down with your parents. If I'm not talking about signing bonus, they're not having the conversation with me. I'm going to repeat that. At 14 and 15, to walk into our household, if I don't say we can frame up the signing bonus later, Mrs. Jordan or Mr. Jordan, wow. we can talk about some other things. We will get to the signing bonus because if I don't reference that, they're going to escort they already, me out the house. Yeah, they, already, yeah. they already turned that off. You're not talking about that money. So think about the love that you got to have to compete here, as you well know, week in and week out. Right. A loss. How you going to show back up, get yourself together, pick up the pieces, go evaluate the tape, stay off social media because someone's disliking you or they got thumbs down. And where does all of this go? I go to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. I see the, the young men, which I completely appreciate. They showing up with a trucks and cars of production crews, like getting out the car. So those are like the different where mm -hmm. before you show up, 
you, you, you put some work in. Now they're not showing up without their team capturing content. Is this about the game or is this about you and where do we all? So I'm going to say it wasn't about the game until the Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl is a very much time to be yourself and be but as I'm much just as saying, you can. But think about it. Your Absolutely. first Pro Bowl, I was there. First Pro Bowl, Hawaii. But you I wasn't coming. With, you didn't have no cars. It was you. No, it, the was the, it was the big fam. Everybody invited. First Pro Bowl, everybody coming. I'm saying, but you didn't have a whole production crew behind you getting not. out. We didn't have we didn't have filters like we had filters now. Like Snapchat was really was really hinge <laughs> at the time, and you know, like Instagram was the new Facebook. Yes. Twitter Twitter was something that you got on, but it wasn't like that. And now, before you go, you used to go to like Yahoo for your information for your finance or G, you know, Google or whatever it is. Now you're going straight to Twitter in the morning. You're like, all right, what's trending? What's what's right. what's the what's the hot icon? Like I'm. Good Morning America, the TV show, you used to be like, all right, my mom watches that, so we're going to catch some information. You know, Grandpa always got the news on. Now, everything's made ready available. The resiliency, the grit, I, I feel like that part right. has... I wouldn't say diminished, just, just cover differently. It's, Cam. Cover differently. I came in an era with three a days, every day. Facts. Today, you can't have two padded practices in a row. I appreciate that. For longevity speed purposes, I appreciate that. And honestly, let's just be real. Okay. So, the, so I, is that the reason why you have poor tackling on, on game day? I don't know, but I just feel like in terms, really? of, in, terms of, in terms of star players, they were never seen three days anyways. And you could say they did. That's not Cam. I'm that's not, not trying true. to hear that. I, I know for sure. Cam and Philly. I now, we're watching them. I, I would just say we did not win the big one. Yeah. I don't know if Chris Carter ever saw a three day. Impossible. I didn't play with Chris. No, I'm saying when oh, I was growing okay, up. Okay, okay. I'm just uh, yeah. But there, you, but there was some two a days there. <laughs> right. Definitely two a days. Yeah, yeah. On on a very light prep. Cam. For sure. Eleven padded practices in a single season. I appreciate that. <laughs> this last like this, this last like was seven or eight years that that was part of that. I said, look at this. <laughs> like, look at us. I appreciate we got the counted, counted pads. Piece, Absolutely. But there's some unintended consequences that come with it. For sure. So people say, hey, some sloppiness. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, week four, week five, for people to hit their rhythm. Mm. People are good tacklers because they tackle all the time. Absolutely. People are good catchers because, as you know, because they catch all the time. Right. Now it's just... I thought it was good catchers because they're protected over the middle at every chance. Now they're seen as defenseless receivers <laughs> at every time they touch the ball. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> my gripes. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I can't wait to come work. Come Ooh, work with me. Ooh, that other side scary. Oh, I can't. Uh, I just became an NFL PA rep. You know, so it's uh, awesome. This last year or so, and uh, it's very inter interesting in general, just to see hierarchies and or positionings of what I see now. Like you know, I, without rendering anybody ineffective, I see both sides. Like we things clear clear up. Yes. It's about the game. That's all I want it to be. Vince. So you don't like the body weight, the body weight foul? <laughs> Come on, I don't like half the fouls that on the quarterback. But that's, <laughs> we've already okay, we've already moved okay, beyond. Okay. With, you know, like there's, yeah, hey, that that's you know, I get it. Protect your franchise. Make it make make the uh, make the picture perfect kid still be picture perfect. Just because he took a, a slow read and led okay. his receiver now into you a know defender this firsthand. Yeah. If you don't have a quarterback, mm -hmm. the season. Is done, All right. <laughs> sir. <laughs> COVID took out two quarterbacks. We had to play with a, a, a with a, a, a rookie quarterback against one Miami. And every player knows, oh. week in and week out, if you have a chance to win or not, based off of who's under the center. Absolutely, you can still win in spite of the Raiders did it this year. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's what's the one thing about the game that still gives you joy beyond you, of course, being in this position, looking at it? How do the fans enjoy it? What do you still enjoy about the I, game? I enjoy watching just the beauty and the athleticism because sometimes I still have a I'm I have a hard time remembering that I used to do that like 15 years, baby. I, I, I when I watch what you all do. I'm amazed. I'm looking at Coach Fuel, who I work with, and Coach Stu. I was like, did you see that catch? Yeah. Or did you see that pass rush? Or, Woo! That part, there's an excitement that I see that I just enjoy 
and I'm constantly reminded of just how special you guys are. But I can't picture myself unless I see a video or somebody, you know, show me something. I just, some of those things, I'm, I'm just like, man, I used to do that, but I don't remember that part. But right. when I watch you all, it's just a thing of beauty. I, I, that's the, the part that I enjoy the most. Hmm. The intensity level, some of the rivalries, but then watching y'all do some special stuff, I can look at the coach and go, whoa, did you see that? Run that back. <laughs> Put that in way to play. You know, so, yeah. Oh, on, on the opposite spectrum, what uh, what, what sort of like wakes you up in the middle of the night? Like, you know, I didn't see my pops who only played 13 years compared to your 15 or, or my hopefully heading into year 14. Uh, knock on wood there. Um you know, wake up and it looks like he's catching a ball in the middle of the night. You know, like he'll be asleep and be, hands come out. I'm like, bro, it is not your heyday anymore, big fella. Let, let that, like, what keeps you up in the night? It could be good or bad. It was like, just, what? Is there a, so, a specific play? Like, you know, my mine's going to be forever haunted that a referee didn't get the right call when when we played the Rams in an NFC ch championship game. And, you know, I, 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 what I think about, Will there a de will, will will a death mm. occur, and how would we actually respond to that as a people? Like, knock on, hopefully that never happens. But we're in a we're in a, a sport that has some of those levels of contact. We can use the term violence. Mm -hmm. How would we actually respond if that occurred? Mm. The closest we had was the Demar Hamlin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you see how we responded. Some of us, some people were paralyzed. Some people. So it was. That is what. That is what is just like Lord. Right. What do we do? And are we actually truly prepared to have those discussions? You know, you can put some pl some things and plans in place. But what if this occurs? And then I also think about not just real time, but, you know, what if there's a tragedy that happens in a team? Right. Is, is wiped out. Jeez. You know, what are, those, what are those calls? So those are the kind of things not to be, but... Yeah, you're an adult, because I'm over but, here. I'm over here like a kid. I've never even thought about... I'm but over they here can happen. I mean, think about... You know, we, we're on planes and stuff every day. Right. We see stuff happening. What if something happens to a club? I know we have some policies and place yeah. to... But, but like a real life, like you're saying, like a Marshall situation. No question. Back in the day when who the plane gonna, went who down, we the calling? team. How are, you gonna, how are we having that truth? Now the conversation is real with the, with the family. Right. So, you know, how do we respond to that publicly? Is there an answer for that? You got that. You got that. I, you started formulating an answer I, for that. I don't have an answer because there's you got process, but I but I have to think about it absolutely because there's a human element that we saw that played itself out two years ago. Game was over, like, bro, like we can't play. One of, one of the brotherhood goes down for real, for real. Like again, there's injuries that happen, and honestly, defensive side, offensive side. You know, going into a game, you, you say a quick prayer, Lord, protect both sides of the field. Don't let anybody get injured for real. real. So, but those things, when I say because everything else, I feel confident, yeah, good about. We got good practices, redundant. We got good policies. You got best practices across across the organization. But then the thing that happened that there's no one is expecting to happen, and now you have to have a real. It's a it's a true conversation, right? And it's not in the manual. It's not something that you studied. You know how do we handle how do we handle those things? So, I mean, you know, as strong as the NFL is, I'm sure there's there's some sort of guidelines to get back. Because I mean, at one point, I'm not saying we don't get back. Yeah, yeah but I mean, uh, to be able to overcome, I mean, we we faced COVID where guys were, you know, we, we at one point we flew in two guys the night before the game yeah. just to just to catch it. We played Denver with the with the kid against a kid, a kid who was playing quarterback who was bagging groceries two weeks before. You know, like, the NFL but is listen, a machine. No, no, but listen, Cam. Yeah, but we, you're right. We forgo the human element aspect. The person is a still alive. Correct. So you can bring it. I'm talking about... Can't come back. Can't come back. Yeah. 
So th- those are the kind of things I know people are like, why the, why would it be that? Because those are things I think about. Right. We're traveling and all over the position, world. Absolutely. You know, there's We're a lot that can happen. Germany so game now. What what can happen? What what happens if this happens? The what ifs. Yeah. So. What if this New Orleans Saints win the Super Bowl and Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans? It, that's all I'm hey, dreaming about these but, days. But it happened. We saw Tampa do it. Right. Saw so LA do it. Could, could New Orleans? Could New Orleans make that happen? Right. Super Bowl Fifty Nine in New Orleans. I'm looking forward to that. Super Bowl Fifty Nine in New Orleans. Are we getting excited about it just yet? Like when do when do you get excited about it? I got excited about it knowing it was coming because it got pushed off for like two years on our way. Three years. New stadiums popped up. We kept get, we got we got rolled back and then it. Like, so I was started land. thinking about it. Mm. The night that Kansas City closed out Fifty Eight. Right. Because immediately you go to next cycle. Next cycle. Literally, you literally go, all right, we're out of Vegas. Here's where we are next year. And then you just begin, you know, thinking about what are we going to do differently? I'm thinking operations, officiating. What are we going to do differently from that stadium to now going down to New Orleans? Right. So. Well, I'll be there. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I hope so. Hey, I'm uh, I'm gonna be there regardless. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, I'm always I'm always there every Super Bowl week. You know, and uh, I would love to be on the field and and playing on the field. That. So that'll be that what? Up. That'll be three actually home teams in the last five years in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, could that would that be right? No doubt. Tampa, Lil Wayne. Raiders. I know Lil Wayne's a Green Bay char- a Green Bay fan, but that's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll get robbed for nine. Leading, you think y'all can come out thing. that division? Our division right now, current yeah. before the draft, absolutely. Well, After the draft, seems most likely. Like, seems like Tampa owns that division for whatever reason. Just we, I mean, we had the same record, and the previous years that they won, they won by you know they had a one game split on us. <laughs> Own that division or like barely coming I mean, out of there. You're you, right. You're right. But you, you you can't until you knock the the the, the fat oh, yeah, kid I, off the I hill. Just thought me and you were. <laughs> until you knock the fat kid off the hill. Is, is yeah. you, you, you either want it or you. You, you don't. Didn't win. Facts. You're only good as you're only good as your last game. I, I didn't think that was coming from Or your game, last conference okay. win. Touche. Yeah. Touche. Yeah, hey, I mean, you're right. Todd Bowles doing something down there, but go ahead. Just... No, they made it work with Baker Mayfield and then they extended him. So, you know, they, they got something going on. Thought, thought they might do something with Devin White. Devin White comes back. I said, okay. It's not that, not that they were going to go into Bill I am mode. a fan of Cam. I am a fan of Co- I am, and I am a fan of Coach Allen. I love my guy, D.A., yeah, good people. Great people. Good people. Um, you know, I've got nothing but the highest respect for him, especially dealing with what he had to deal with as his, as his first head coach to he coming up. People. Yeah, good, good people. people. That, that, good if people. that don't show you hard, I don't know what does. <laughs> good people. Um, so just, you know, I know we've talked at, at different Pro Bowls and over the years. I like, I've got four kids. You've got, you beat five. me out. You got five, right? I have five children and nine grands. I just had my ninth grand, grand my ninth grandchild, my fourth grand boy. See, I've got young I'm kids. What does it feel like watching your kids play? Like, you know, because I'm, I'm watching my man's play T-ball. I'm like, please don't love it. And he's like, Dad, so, I don't want to play this no more. I want to so play football. I watch with a different eye okay. because my wife's sitting next to me, and she's really all into it. I'm looking at, did he take care of his responsibility? I'm just looking at it from a different game, but then I have to be careful about what I say to him yeah. afterwards because – my wife is listening, but it's fun. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I think about what I would have done differently, or done, done differently, this- yeah, mm-hmm. like done differently. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be him, right? But I had because I had the opportunity to watch our oldest boy Troy Jr. play at NC State, and then Teron at Ohio State. And then, but watching the game, like I'm watching warm up. I'm like, he don't, he got, he don't have the right intensity level today, you know. Like, you can't just turn it on, you, you know. Like I'm, yeah. I'm looking at, he's slipping, like he got to put his foot in the ground, put his shoulder over his toe, like. Do you ever want to come off the like, stage, like, off the stands, and like go really talk? I want to go really talk to him, but then my, you know, my wife is looking at me like, no, let, you're let a parent be. today. Let him be. Let, me let, let him be. So. That part has been fun, and now he's with the UFL team um, mm-hmm. with Wade Phillips down with the United Stampeders. No, uh, Bromp to Brahmas, Brahmas down in San Antonio. Yeah, once they merged, now now I've got to relearn the team names. I had them it's down when it was XFL, play. USFL. So that part has been fun, mm-hmm. 
And I'm really looking forward to, I'm hoping, I'm pushing my, my daughter to get her girls playing. Now that flag done jumped off. Flag, that's what the NFL's turned into. But, but, no. Can't. You brought it up. I had, my daughter played it? flag and she was like, she went back to soccer and I understood it. My oldest son plays play flag. That man asked me. So every, you're not an advocate for for the game of football. I love it. So why would you allow your daughter to go play another to go play soccer? Because I believe in, I believe in free, free freedom of choice. You know, like at this point, tell me what you love, but you have to try something new. So you're one of those men who don't want women to have good opportunities to play the sport, the great sport of football. Are she you, tried. Are, are you on record saying that you, you're you're against, I'm here. I'm here to support the kids women? in whatever that they want to do. And my baby girl tr played played a full season. And I didn't see the passion that I wanted to see. And I said, hey, do you want to play another? She said, no, Dad, I want to play soccer. Okay. And we took her out to soccer. She scored three goals. She said, this is what I'm meant to do. And I said, yes, ma'am. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just, it's something that during a pandemic. Two goals. She missed one. See, that's why she needs to just play. How did she miss a goal? The big old goal that. No, five. Five okay. years old. It's, it's really muddle huddle ball. Like, okay, she's so, going to so, she return back to football. She, she's only five. Man, I tried to but get the I'm, same I'm just year excited just about. Refused. I'm excited about that opportunity to watch potentially my kids or my right. grandkids hit the Olympics. I'm I'm really really excited about that. Last question I have for you. Um, now that we've talked about flag, is how how is it knowing that you can catch scholarships from flag football from well, that's the from seven on seven like direct well, correlation never so, put pads on to. But that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the sport. Yeah. So, so when you think about football, the sport of football, and this is when you put it in context, we were probably one of the only sports that didn't have other other ways of with basketball. You got five on five, you got three on three. You know, you can go in your driveway. When the pandemic hit, we were forced to study who's playing and why they're playing, and there was sports that grew inside the pandemic, that time period when the, the world was on lockdown. And it was like, we need to expand what we do. We need to welcome other forms of the game of football. Flag was one. Why not? Why not young ladies? Right. Why should we not support young ladies like us playing seven on seven? For sure. Playing varsity football at the varsity level, earning a scholarship, somebody paying for their their education, and they get a chance to play ball, and just watching Something. it explode, Cam. Yeah, man, it's competitive. Absolutely, watching these young ladies get out. I I saw we was at the the annual meeting, and um, Steve Young came back and talked about him coaching his daughters. Mm. D Hop talking about seeing how his his flag leagues have exploded and brought the community together. Hey, L A twenty eight. Flag football, flag in the football Olympics in right. next year in Paris, the World Games, right? Like this, we're going on in, in, in here in a few weeks. We'll have our 12th state sanctioned girls varsity flag. Really, with Washington. I mean, that's a like that's awesome. I love that for my kids. I've got three girls. <laughs> I mean, think about <laughs> love, it. Love that's that. awesome. Colorado went this week. Washington in the coming weeks. Give us 12 states. And it just keeps rolling. This August, NC2A will be applying for flag football being an emerging sport at the NC2A level. Yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? In college, not? you know, Cal has a great field hockey program, but I'd rather watch flag football. I'd rather watch rugby. But I'm also uh, – what do you, you – sound like Hardy about? Nickerson. Yeah. Go My Bears. mentor. <laughs> Go Bears. Hardy Nixon Jr. was in the league for a little while. I know. You know? But, I, would... I learned the ropes. Yeah. As a PA rep mm. and as a player, Hardy Nickerson and Reggie White. Okay, great. Okay. Greatness personified. Jeez. Just talked to Hardy last week. You know, he's coaching back out in the Bay. He's no, coaching. is he? Yeah, he's coaching. He back out his, um, him and all of... Um, his eldest daughter was a year younger than me, I think. Like, I went to school with... But he's coaching with a four four cow bears mm. are on his high school coaching staff. Really? Yeah, Hardy Jr.'s with him, a wide receiver, running back. Where did the big tight, I mean the big tackle, played in Indy? Um No, that's that's way before my time. 
is a tight end. It was a tackle that played in Indy with Peyton Manning. Okay. Is um is coach winning that went that went to Cal as well. Mm. So love it. Go Bears. <sighs> so that's why. Okay, I I get it now. Go Bears. I get it now. Go Bears. I get it. Yeah, I get yeah, it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> hey, you know, when you see me, you see B. I see. I, I, I think I, I made that one up. I'm. I'm. A, I'm a so that's going why on. you didn't say like UCLA and USC. You didn't. Tr- you didn't trash even, schools. You, so soft powder blue and uh, like what like a crimson. Uh, the crimson red is pretty tough. Crimson red and gold. I'm not going to argue. So you soft and Ke- powder so blue. So you and Keyshawn would. Never really see. I, for sure, we could. I mean, JJ Stokes. I never beat U- USC, so that's always you ever one beat up. J- UCLA. You all the time. That baby bears. A Bruin Did you all is just find a, a home bear. yet? Did you all find a home? Uh, uh yeah, we're we're part of the ACC division? now. <laughs> it might as well be. Really? Yeah, we us Stanford and SMU went to the ACC, and Cal in the ACC makes zero sense to me. That the the traveling nightmares that are bound to happen, and it can't be all sports because ain't no way you're traveling. I was one of y'all was gonna find a home. <sighs> Me too. UCLA, USC, they got a bigger market. At least market. they get a great education. Yeah, you know? but I mean, you know, if you want the number one public institute in the they, nation, they lean in we're not going to go to Wisconsin. Okay, thank, <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me today. Hey, on that note, <laughs> I appreciate you tapping in anyways, big dog. Um, if anything, just major blessings for everything that you, you've been over the years to to the game. Uh, and you've always been open with me, so I've, I've got nothing but appreciation for you. Cam, thank you for what you do. You're an inspiration to many of the young men. And as a veteran, a legend, I love to see young men take advantage of the resources. You've been intentional about life after the game, of developing those skills and right relationships. I just think you're a real model that guys in any locker room could see because it will end and is typically going to end on somebody else's terms. Yeah. But your intentionality. It all it all has to come to an end. Yes. But you've been you've been a just a star, man, a rock star. Of both it. high performance and then the things that you're doing off the field with you and the wife and the and the kids. Oh yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. True inspiration. Thank you. Well, you don't want to have been married for 30, 30 years. I saw the I saw the uh, wedding anniversary post. Yeah, 30. I 30. said, huh, yeah, 30 in? 30, 30. I'm going to have to ask 30. for speakers off the field. But till then, I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.